Hey guys, it's Liddy here from LA3D Printing, and today I'm going to officially be showing you guys how I turned my TiVo Tarantula into a little CNC slash engraver machine. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so if you haven't seen already, I actually posted two other videos on me um, taking apart my TiVo Tarantula, transforming it, um, putting it in an enclosure. Um, uh, if you do not know, my TiVo Tarantula was... Uh, technically my first 3D printer that actually ever worked. Um, I've had lots of up and down with it. It is a DIY 3D printer and um, it has gotten me to where I am now. Um, and it definitely was a great printer for uh, me in the beginning, um, but now it has um, lost quality in printing, so I decided to actually turn it into an engraving machine slash CNC. So um, this method, I'm not 100% sure if it will turn it into a full CNC where it can cut things out, but I definitely know this will turn it into like a, an engraving machine. Now um, I finally got the finishing ideas from a channel called RC Life On. Now this guy on his channel, he um, just posted a video about turning his, um, I believe it was his CR10S or one of his CR10 um, 3D printers into an engraving machine. Now I'm going to be using the exact methods he did, but I'm actually going to be using it on my TiVo Tarantula. So the build plate is a little different, um, and I actually had to design a uh, holder for the actual bracket that he made for the motor. So I will link all the links in the description for all the parts you need and for the STLs you will need to download if you do have this TiVo Tarantula or if you also use this kind of uh, mount for your 3D printer. So there's a um, X bracket on the X axis and it um, is kind of a V bracket and I didn't want to reprint a new bracket for that so I basically just um, brought up a uh, rough sketch of it and then actually made a plate and you guys will see later uh, what I'm talking about but it basically just clips in and you screw some things and it's actually super sturdy um, I do print it out of PETG which is a super strong filament so um, let's just get started and show you guys exactly what I'm doing so this way is actually super simple what you're gonna need is a uh, small motor um, again I will leave in the description below um, a set power supply and then a controller board for this and then you're gonna need some engraving tips and stuff and um, as of now I'm still waiting for that in the mail it is coming from Gearbest so it might take a couple weeks but for now I'm just gonna be showing you guys what the mount looks like and then uh, later in the video we will start assembling everything and actually getting this awesome thing to work okay so I already put this together now this is actually super easy to put together um, this is not the final design the design will be upgraded for you guys because um, I did put in some wrong uh, holes in the wrong places but basically you just put in some three screws down here to hold the back plate to this actual motor mount and then um, the there will be a main screw that goes through here and then through this part which will eventually um, hold this and as you can see that this is not fitting because um, when we put this back plate on, it actually took up some of the space. So for you guys, it will be um, fit. It'll fit nicely and everything will work. Um, but as you see here, um, they aren't going to fit perfectly. But as of now, this is going to work. And then I'll have one more screw up here just to make sure everything is super stable. And again, this is um, printed out of my PETG. So it's super strong and has about 70% infill. So um, this should work and should be very stable. All right, so now as you can see, I put the screw in here. Now this goes all the way through underneath here and goes through here, which will let us mount it. It'll go all the way through this hole and then we will just add a nut back here to secure it. So when we're going to mount this is actually um, when we put the motor in here and we'll screw it in from the bottom here. Um, but just for now, because um, I'm waiting for the motor still in the mail, I'm going to show you guys what it actually looks like on the um, X cartridge mount. Um, and yeah, so we'll go from there and then we'll wait for the motors to actually come and the rest of the stuff so we can hook everything up and then see how it works. Alright guys, so this is what it will look like when it's installed without the motor. So I actually didn't show this process because um, it was actually quite hard to get this nut back here just because I had to actually put a different size um, screw in here just because I couldn't find a long enough um, one for the original size of the actual um, mount for the X cartridge um, 
but so I had to do a longer screw but I don't think you guys should have to if you do you just have to drill the holes a little bit bigger um, that's basically the only problem I really had um, but then again all of these should fit under here these um, three sc screws under here and then again you're gonna wanna um, install the motor before you actually install this which um, I think would be a little harder for me so you guys could do whatever order you want but I believe um, installing motors a little easier because there are little screw holes under here but maybe it is um, easier to install after it's on here just because this kind of setup for this uh, cartridge is um, a little different and a little sh harder to actually reach in the back but if you have the right um, size nut and screw then you should be good um, and is actually super super strong so now the next thing I'm going to do um, is install a new one of these Z couplers now I 3d printed one um, in PETG and I will show you guys or I'll leave a link in the description to that STL file um, I actually installed it on my TiVo uh, tornado which had a bent one as I and as you can see um, if I go down here again you can see there's a lot of give um, in this and I, we really don't want that so I'll show you over here too you don't want that in your um, uh, carving so I'm gonna install a new one of those because that's too springy um, but uh, again, I'll leave the link to that in the description, but make sure when you're installing this make sure everything is very sturdy um, This is super strong and when you're printing it make sure you print it in about 70% infill or even a hundred Just make sure everything is really strong. All right, so this is the motor it finally came in the mail uh, Now again, there will be a link to this uh, where I ordered it in the description below I got it on GearBest. took a while to come here or get to me um, but what I'm gonna have to do is uh, there's two parts or two holes down here as you can see uh, these two right here and there's the holes in here where I will screw um, a little tiny screw through there to connect them and then I will make a longer um, longer cords just take these off and solder some new cords and then bring it to the main base or power supply here um, and I'll do a little bit of time lapse of that for you guys and it's super easy so uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit Alright guys, so this is the moment you've all been waiting for. I finally uh, assembled everything and I had to actually print a new chuck um, for holding the uh, bits and then holding the other end of the motor. So it's all assembled in there. I only put one screw in because it is actually a really snug, uh, snug fit. Um, so there wasn't really any vibration or anything. So I actually did a test already. So I'm going to show you guys that and then I'm going to go through on Simplify 3D uh, what my settings are for actually getting this to actual print or just to engrave things. Um, I've had a lot of fun actually um, testing out everything with this and I think it turns out really nice and I'm super excited to show you guys the final product and everything. So I, I really appreciate if you're still here at the end of the video. I know how it has been long 
Um, but I finally got everything in the mail, everything set up, and now it's time to show you guys how to actually do this um, if you do it on your machine. So let's go check out the machine and then we can hop on to Simplify 3D. All right, so first off, just starting, um, this is the control box. Now I did actually misplace the uh, knob here, so there's no knob on there right now. Um, and then the wires just feed down here through that hole and then connect to the engraver. And now, as you can see, I kind of did another test print here. Now, um, as you guys know, I did purchase these little um, bits. Now, one of them uh, worked just fine. I'm still experimenting which ones to work with best, but I definitely won't be using these big ones. But I did put in a normal Dremel uh, engraving bit here. So I'm going to test out that, see how well that does, um, just to see the difference because they are different tips. Um, and then again, that the wires just go up there. I just taped it a little bit here. And again, there's only one nut in there. And then also, as you can see, my chuck is a little different. So there's actually just two pieces instead of one um, because the first uh, version was a little wobbly. So when it spun, it would just wobble and it wouldn't be going straight. Um, so now I'm going to turn it on and just show you guys what the motor looks like when it's on. And also, um, then we'll have to go into Simplify 3D and show you guys how to set it all up. All right, so now I'm going to turn it on for you guys. And I just used the knob on the little control box I showed you a little while ago. So here it goes. So it is a little loud, um, but I will be adding some foaming inside here to keep the sound in. And one uh, cool thing from earlier when I actually used this for the printer, I had this little plexiglass window in here. So when I'm actually working over to the right here where my computer is, I can check on how everything is going. And I did do a full test print, and again, I will show you guys that. Um, and everything went very, very nicely. Um, nothing got stuck, nothing went wrong. It actually went very, very smoothly. And um, I just had to tweak a couple more settings because there was some dragging along the plastic. Um, but other than that, everything turned out great. So now let's go check out Simplify 3D. Also, one thing I did want to mention was um, when you put this on your printer, it should be in the center. Now, if you use uh, the version I did because I edited it and you guys know that we use the um, E3D version with the V thing on the back, it is actually offset from normal so this is the size I will be able to be able to print now if you use a bigger printer you most likely will be able to use the whole build space there's another video who actually started this um, RC life on he actually started all this so I'll leave his video link in the description so you guys can check that out but I did have to put some wood down here because my end stop was already all the way to the bottom and um, I couldn't adjust it anymore so I just put some wood here with some adhesive on the other side and some of these clamps just so it would raise it up a little bit and I'd be able to use this plexi on here so just simple setup as you can see everything is just sitting here but now I'll turn it on for you guys and then we can check out Simplify 3D. Alright guys so um, here's my computer sorry there's no screen record usually it's off um, audio so I basically um, just am going to use my camera so as you guys know I asked for Simplify 3D for Christmas um, one main reason is so I could do this a lot easier because I wasn't really sure how to do it on uh, Kira and also because this is a great software. Now I've been using it for a couple weeks now and it is amazing. It's definitely worth the money. So if you have $150, definitely go check this out. And if you don't like it, then you get to get your money back um, within two weeks, I believe. Um, but it's definitely worth money. So getting started, I did create my own um, process and everything here. So it's called TTCNC. Um, so everything is different here. So first going off with the extruder part, it is um, 0.2 millimeters, the nozzle is, and then my extrusion multiplier is one millimeter. Um, going down to the extrusion width, it is 0.3 millimeters. Um, and then you don't really need retraction on. I mean, I have it on, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then going over to layer, I have it as 0.1 millimeter layer right here. And then also uh, three top solid layers and three bottom, um, and then just two uh, perimeters, just to make sure that everything gets uh, connected. The first layer height is 120%, 0.1 millimeter, 
uh, the first layer width is 150 and the first layer speed is 40 just to go slow enough now 40% is just right for me um, it actually went so, uh, definitely the perfect speed and you can slow it down or speed it up if you think that is necessary going over to extensions you want to make sure your brim and skirt is off or else it will leave a line around your actual um, engraving uh, so you definitely don't want that and make sure everything is off here uh, your infill, I just use normal honeycomb. It doesn't matter because you're basically just getting a first layer. There's going to be no infill. So I just left it at 100% up here. Support, you don't want any support because, again, this isn't really making anything three-dimensional. Um, temperature, you want to make sure everything is off because um, it, you don't, like the bed, I do have my heated bed connected still. So I don't want to get it to 60 as you guys saw it was before because it will heat up the bed. And then the um, primary extruder is definitely zero degrees because we don't have one hooked up. Cooling, um, I just left it at 100 because I might actually add a fan on there just to blow everything away or just to keep it, keep the motor cool. Um, but you don't have to have cooling on. G code. Um, everything is normal here. Now, for me, my build volume is different than it normally would for printing because you guys saw that my um, motor is offset. So uh, mine's actually 177 by 200 by 200. The Z axis doesn't matter, but you just want to have it in there. Um, and then down here, you have the offset. So I put my Z offset at 0 0.22. Um, now, I still experimented with that, and that um, actually was the right number. Now, you guys don't have to have that if you have your. Uh, first layer down and everything, everything is flat, um, or your Z offs or your Z end stop is correct. So, next going over to script, I made sure um, that I had this script. I will put this, this down in the description below. Um, the Z uh, plus three means that it'll lift three so it doesn't drag, but usually um, when I, when it goes over to start the print, I turn on the motor instead of just having it on automatically. Uh, and then the end script is this, and again, I will have this in the description below. You want to make sure you have a lift at the end so that it doesn't drag across um, your print or your cutout or your engraving. Um, so then I'll have all this and um, the motors and bed and stuff. That doesn't really matter because, or the bed and the extruder doesn't matter. Because again, they're not heated. Speeds, I have my default printing speed at 100 or 1,600 millimeters per minute, and that seems to work great for me. Again, I could speed it up if I really wanted it to. Um, outline uh, under speed is 50%, solid infill is uh, 80, and I s changed my X and Y axis movements to 3,300 millimeters per minute and my Z to 1,000 millimeters per minute. Um, they might be set like this for you guys, but just showing you this is uh, what my settings are. So going to other, I didn't really change anything in here um, because this mostly has to do with um, actual 3D printing. And then to advanced, we have nothing enabled in here that will that's different from normal default settings. Um, again, make sure your uh, G code over here in this file, make sure these are correct for your bed or else things will be offset. Um, again, if you have a bigger printer, um, and if you check out the link in the description below of the first video from RC Life On, he, um, he uses his full build plate on, I believe, the CR10S. Uh, so he gets big prints, but for me, it's fine. This is just testing and stuff. Um, but other than that, this is all the settings. So um, now I'm going to show you guys what you or how you import. So I actually have um, designed a little logo thing. As you can see here, um, I had to add this background part here so that it would be one, uh, one model. So basically what I have to do is uh, make it go down millimeters so that it just shows just shows this part, the part that I want to be engraved. But the thing is, is you want it to be about 0.4 millimeters tall. So you um, can also scale it over here, as you can see. So I'm going to scale it maybe 200%. Um, and then we can rotate it so it actually fits. And I believe this is too much. So we're just going to scale it to 150. And then again, you want to go underneath. So as you can see, three millimeters is too much for me. So I can experiment with um, uh, different numbers like 0 
uh, let's see. Um, so as you can see here, there's a barely thin layer here. So to check if you have just one layer, you can just go here. And as you can see, I have two, which isn't a big deal. Um, if, your, if your nozzle or your um, engraving tip is really low, then it would go deeper um, if you have two layers. But you want to try to get one. Um, two is actually OK. But again, you can just um, experiment with these numbers up here. So if I do five, as you can see, you can now see the lines through here. Um, if I zoom out just a little bit, you can see the lines. And then that should be the correct length. So you can see there's only one layer here. And I'm not sure why it doesn't in a weird um, order. As you can see here, it just does them randomly. Uh, but other than that, this is basically it. Now, we will save this to a file and then I'll set up a little time lapse for you guys what it looks like when it is engraving um, so that's it for Simplify 3D now if you don't have Simplify 3D I'm not really sure how you do it um, on Kira I'm guessing it's just the same you want to make sure everything is really slow um, but other than that let's go check out the printer um, or the engraving machine now and see how it goes <laughs> Okay, so uh, the engraving is done. Now, I did stop it midway because uh, I had some technical difficulties. And unfortunately, I lost and I cannot find my first engraving that I did, which was pretty decent. Um, but I'll just be showing you what this one looks like and then um, let you know what kind of um, things I'll have to change if you guys run into these also. So this is what it looks like. Now, the L is kind of weird because I did, as you guys saw earlier, I did try to... Uh, uh, engrave it before and then I just stopped it and made it mid engrave so then I just started again and this is how it looked but as you can see here there is some gapping and I believe that's from the motor actually uh, s like skipping or uh, or the bed is skipping you know like layer shift um, and then it kind of got stuck down here too and again this is the uh, new tool not the ones that I actually ordered so I didn't really know how it was gonna go um, so unfortunately it didn't do the best or do, do the greatest because I think it um, engraved too much or my bed was too high or the um, engraving tip was too low into the plastic. So again there's still a lot of trial and error with this. I definitely won't be able to get it perfectly um, for you guys perfect in this video but I will let you know on my uh, social medias my Instagram and my Twitter will both be in the description below so definitely go follow me on those and I will let you guys know how I'm doing on this but I really just wanted to show you guys um, how how this printer or engraving CNC machine is doing now I know I made two other videos on it um, and you guys have been waiting for this video uh, and I know it's long but if you're here at the end thank you so much for watching um, I definitely appreciate it. I'm excited to have this printer now, CNCing and engraving things. Hopefully, I will put a laser on it so I can laser engrave things and burn some things. But yeah, um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please, please subscribe and hit that like button down below. It definitely will help me grow my channel. And this year, I really want to get there to maybe 5,000 or even 3,000 subscribers. I just want to grow this channel and I want to take you guys with me on my journey. If you guys want any other kind of videos, please let me know down in the, in the comments below. I really want to know what you guys want to see so that you guys will stick around and keep watching on my channel. And if you guys didn't like this video, please let me know why in the comments below. But if you did, please let me also know why you did like it. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for sticking around and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.